Hi there, welcome to our daily teaching video. Hey, in a moment, I'm going to share a piece of my new online course, The Spirit-Filled Life. This is a course, a 12-part course, on how to live full and how to live in the overflow of the Holy Spirit. More details, check out the link below, but I know this is gonna be a blessing to you. Hey, before we do that real quick, let me show three quick announcements. Number one, please do subscribe wherever you're watching this, YouTube, podcasts, lots of different places. Uh, I'd love to have you as part of our online community. Secondly, I have an email newsletter I send out every Friday with news, updates, free things, books I'm reading, travel news, missions, lots of different things like that and uh, you can sign up for that with the link below and we have a three hour teaching on how to hear God's voice. We'd love to get into your inbox when you uh, subscribe for our email newsletter. Lastly, let me just mention my ministry school. I have an online ministry school, ministryschool.net, that is aimed at helping believers develop and grow in their faith in God. This is a faith ministry school. Uh, we have lots of individual courses and a monthly subscription. We have a group, a private mentoring group that meets using a Zoom call once a month and has question and answer, lots of different things there. So do check that out before below. Right, let's jump into this lesson on the Spirit-Filled Life. Welcome to lesson eight of the Spirit-Filled Life course. Great to have you here with me. Why not grab a good cup of coffee like I have here? Mm. And your Bible and notepad and pen, we have PDF notes that go with each of these lessons. What I'd like to do is be uh, actually very pithy and practical today. And um, let me call up my notes here. Just actually teach and share some thoughts on the Spirit-filled church. And how do we, how do we be a Spirit-filled church? How do we stay a Spirit-filled church? How do we maintain that flow of the spirit in the life of our churches. I am um, part of my uh, mission and call is to be a church pastor. I'm here today in my, home, my own home church and I want this to be a spirit filled church and um, I just want to show some thoughts particularly how we get the gifts to flow within a church, how we allow that flow of the spirit. How do we deal with that as a leadership? How do we keep people safe as well and stop kind of weird and wonderful things happening within the the life of a church. So I just want to share some thoughts, uh, particularly from my heart as a pastor in that thing. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12 verse 7 says, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So let's begin talking about the necessity of a Spirit-filled church. Frankly, there's only, there's only a Spirit-filled church. Any church that is not Spirit-filled is not really a church or not a church that is fulfilling its mission in the body of Christ. I don't believe there are different kind of varieties of churches like different fruits on a tree. I believe everyone needs to preach Jesus. There are some churches that may have a call to do this and more of a call to do that. But every church needs the power and the presence of God. And uh, I would encourage anybody, if you're in that season of looking for a church, to make that one, not the only one, but one of those um, non-negotiable things about a church. And uh, I think that sometimes can get a little harder to do for younger Christians or less experienced Christians than it used to be. There's something that's happened, I've seen happen in the body of Christ in about the last, probably since the 1990s, where... What a lot of churches did is they wanted to grow, so they stylistically changed many things about their churches. In the 1990s, you had groups like Hillsong come along, and then Bethel in the 2000s, and Elevation and churches like this. And there's often a church that looks, I'm, I'm not critiquing those churches, but um, what often will happen is a church will adopt the look, the style, the freedom, if you will, of a spirit-filled church without actually really adopting the doctrine or the practice of a spirit-filled church. And it's so vital that every church, I will get, I've seen people who go to a church for a year or two and then discover, oh, this church doesn't believe in speaking in tongues or prophecy or healing. And, um, <clears throat> you know, my exhortation to anybody really looking for a church would be, if you can go to that church for, for one week, two weeks, three weeks, for a month, and you're not seeing the gifts of the spirit flow, you're not seeing the supernatural, you're not seeing a place given within the regular, let's call it the Sunday service in that church, for the gifts of the spirit to flow, they don't really believe in the gifts of the spirit. 
they may believe in them as a doctrinal position on their website, but what we really believe in in our hearts, we do, we practice. I have rarely been in, uh, th there are not many churches I've been in, let me put it this way, that don't take an offering, <laughs> that don't um, take an offering, tithes an offering, and rightly so. It's an important thing, <clears throat> both for the functioning of a church, but actually for the people of the church. So my point is when we believe in something, we find time to make that thing happen. I think most churches find some time for worship. Why? Because they believe in it. Most churches find some time for the, you know, the reading or the preaching of the word. Why? Because they believe in it. And if we say we believe in the things of the Spirit, and just in this context, I'm probably going to be talking more about the manifestations of the Spirit, the presence of God, the leading of the Holy Spirit. We've got to allow that to find its place in the regular life of the church, not as some abstract uh, thing that can happen once every blue moon, you know, but, but just a regular, normal thing. In 1 Corinthians 12, Paul teaches about spiritual gifts. In 1 Corinthians 13, Paul teaches primarily about love, the love chapter, love is patient, love is kind, but he's talking all about gifts. He's not teaching on love, he's teaching on the love we need to operate in the gifts. That's why he says, if I if I can prophesy but have not love, I'm like a clanging cymbal. If I can prophesy and have faith to move mountains but have not love, you know, it profits me nothing. He's talking about love and the gifts wrapped together. And then in the next chapter, 1 Corinthians 14, it's interesting. It's like you get to visit with Paul uh, an assembly, a gathering, a fellowship, a church fellowship in the early church. And Paul is very practical. <laughs> He's very spiritual. It's interesting. He begins 1 Corinthians 14 with the exhortation, desire spiritual gifts, but especially to prophesy. And then he ends 1 Corinthians 14 by saying, let all things be done decently and in order. The verse precedent, the second to last verse in 1 Corinthians 14, he says, let nobody despise prophecy and let nobody forbid anybody else to speak in tongues. And then he says, that's my idea of decent and in order. So if you ever visit a church where they don't allow prophecy or they forbid people speaking in tongues, they're indecent, <laughs> biblically speaking. So we need the gifts of the Spirit in the church. Um, why? Well, firstly, we need to honor God. We need to honor what God would do in our midst. We can come with our programs and our music and our wonderful arrangements, if you will. But, but in every gathering, we should be saying, God, what do you want to do here? We need to honor and host the presence, the person of Holy Spirit, not just a gift. We need to honor and have him loved and honored and cherished in our midst. We need to realize that there are needs, um, legitimate needs in the body that will not be met if we don't allow the body to minister to the body. Let me say that again. You know, I'm a pastor, senior leader of this church house here and um Great, God uses me, and in some sense, he may use me more than the average bear, because I'm usually the guy with the mic at the front on a Sunday. I'm the one leading. I've got a lot of experience. But this church would be a poor church if only I ministered to people. And God has needs in the local body here, and he has gifts in other members of the body that need to minister to that person. Paul puts it this way. You know, he says, Jesus ascended on high, Ephesians 4 11, and gave gifts to men, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. And then I'll let me fly down for the take a, take a time to verse 16. He says, from whom the whole body is joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share and causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Well, thanks for watching. And uh, remember, you can download the whole course. Uh, there'll be a link below on our website, ministryschool.net. have a special offer on this course at the moment, and I know it will be a blessing to you. Remember to hit the subscribe button, sign up for our email newsletter, and do check out our ministry and all the links below. Thank you for watching. We'll be back tomorrow with another lesson.